back to my YouTube channel. Well, I bet you can guess where we are. Take a look. You'll know where this is. Any, any clues? Yes, you got it. This is the Devil's Den in Fifield Down in Wiltshire, UK. Now, of course, you probably wouldn't know where we are, but this is actually a very famous spot for me. Uh, for those of us involved with crop formations because this was the site way down in that field back behind me there was the site of the 1999 so-called devil's den formation now it's not really a devilish place but there's a celtic burial mound there's a celtic burial formation down there made of some stones and i imagine that the the christians hundreds of years ago thought it was devilish or something and that's why it's named the devil's den but it's actually a kind of a burial mound made of stones. And um, right beyond that, the stones there was that huge formation in 1999. And it was really quite an astounding thing. To get there, I had to walk uh, from way across the downs here. It took about two hours of walking, maybe two hours from Avebury across the Sarsen fields out there. There's actually a nature preserve for these beautiful blue sarsen stones. Um, and uh, the whole nature preserve right there is filled with these beautiful stones. I walked across there and saw it just around 7 p.m. Now, the sarsen stones, it's actually a shortening of the name Saracen. Now, hundreds of years ago meant anything that was sort of foreign, at the time meaning Muslim or Celtic. But they're sandstone blocks. They were actually used to uh, build Stonehenge, uh, the huge blocks that we see down there of sandstone. And uh, apparently, according to what I read, uh, they were made when there was a huge kind of sandstone surface over this whole area that's now the UK millions and millions of years ago. And then it gradually over time broke up and became these stones. And this is the remnant of that surface that existed here millions of years ago. This is a pretty remote location in Wiltshire. Uh, there's no, I mean, there's a main road out there, the A4, but for Wiltshire, this is still pretty remote. Uh, in, in the lower UK, this is pretty remote. And we didn't know exactly where this formation was. We had heard about it. And uh, so I walked to find it and it was a little too late to go down there, but we came back the next day. And that's where all this really interesting stuff happened. I was walking down with Japanese researcher Masa Maki from a parking lot just over in this area. It's about maybe a mile back to the parking lot. And um, first thing we noticed is his Sony camcorder, the dirty heads indicator started to go off. Now, back in those days, we used uh, film uh, video cameras, you know, made with, uh, it, by 1999, we were using digital uh, cameras but they still had physical heads across tape and well you wouldn't get a dirty heads indicator with a brand new camera like he had uh this is something you'd get after years like you know a cassette recorder when the heads would get dirty from the tape rubbing against it for years so that was one indication that something interesting was going on uh then as soon as i got into the formation my static meter um totally froze up my static meter which uh, is very reliable all of a sudden it just froze. I'd never seen it do that before. Minus 0 0.03 volts. It didn't really mean anything. The interesting thing is uh, it just wasn't working anymore. You actually had to take the battery out and start it up again to get it to work. And so we had two interesting events in the span of a few minutes. What would be causing these devices to go haywire? Well, we were in the formation. We were walking around and uh, quite a beautiful looking formation and then uh, this guy named Rob Spate uh, who actually I've talked with the uh, past couple uh, months and uh, he came in there with his buddy and they had a GPS meter that they were using to locate the area and as soon as he walked into the formation the batteries died on it uh, just like other people experienced later with cameras. The GPS has just gone <laughs> wrong basically and the screen has gone Look at this, well, the screen's sort of pixelation, mm. it's like it's up. been pushed or something. This is just solid plastic. Mm. The last time I had this, all my batteries got red hot. So look at the batteries. They're flat as a pancake. Similar. 
<laughs> That's only the second time it's ever happened. Yeah, last time. You had 14 hours when you came in. 14 hours of battery life when I came in. Just put that. And uh, the I went up to him. Uh, I made a little video of it at the time, and he said that he had 14 hours of battery life uh, on his GPS meter when he came in, and now it said zero. So. We had three device failures in the span of about 20 minutes, and that was enough for me to convince me that crop circles were real. This is, I'd only been studying them two years, and I had seen a couple weird effects before. One is one I've mentioned where our uh, tour leader, Ron Russell in 1997, put his Sony camcorder down a Hi8 camera and the solder joints melted by the transformer while it was sitting there on top of the wheat. It wasn't a hot day. Uh, so. Uh, like there was a power surge. And then in 1998, I noticed the autofocus mechanism on my camera, uh, camera. it was uh, an Olympus camera. A lot of, some of the pictures only of crop circles came out very blurry. Like that uses a type of radar and it couldn't focus on the object. So I'd seen some camera and battery failure, but this was colossal. So this was the place for me where it all happened, right down here in Devil's Den. And to this day, I'm still really interested why though that particular shape in the wheat kind of a fractal pattern of nested circles in a star-like uh, setting uh, why would that cause electronic systems to fail i mean i'm getting some ideas and you know if you can see the field it's planted very regularly kind of like a crystalline lattice across the whole field otherwise there'd be, be these grasses here like you see but the the seed planter plants the wheat stalks pretty evenly across the whole field, and that qualifies it to act like a crystal lattice. And then you have the crop circle there, which is kind of swirling it around in a chiral or directional way, a little bit like a liquid crystal. And in my view, that kind of symmetry and symmetry breaking um, is creating some sort of conductivity that you normally don't see in wheat. I mean, you normally think of wheat as an insulator, right? But here, uh, it's acting uh, in some sense like a conductor or generating some sort of field that is so strong that it actually causes a huge output of energy from your battery and your device which can melt the uh, electronics in there, the solder. Uh, other people did report going in here and uh, finding that um, their cameras didn't work for a couple months. One person told me their, their camera didn't work for several months after being in the Devil's Den formation. And we had people on our tour group who, whose cameras uh, didn't work again for the rest of the tour. So I tell people don't bring your new cameras into the uh, formation. So this is the area, this is the Devil's Den. Um, it's a fascinating launching point for me about the power of shape and geometry in a field, it, to me it just shows us there's a lot we don't know. We think we sort of understand what's going on here, but all of a sudden you're getting a shift and the space that you're going into, in this case a crop pattern, crop formation, um, is, has properties that doesn't fit any of the conventional ideas that you and I were taught from physics or mechanics or engineering or any, anything like that, just common sense. Uh, you wouldn't think of a space that's just made of wheat and soil and air to be electrically active, electronically active, but those particular spaces are. I came back here in the fall of 1999, October, to test whether it was something about that particular area. I mean, we did have the dolmens down there, and maybe the Celts chose this place because it was uh, electrically active. Um, so. Someone suggested that idea. I came back here in October of 99 just to see if maybe it wasn't the crop circle, maybe there are underground springs or something about the field. But I didn't have any effects on the static meter, no effects on cameras, everything was ordinary. I mean, how many times have you actually just walked into an area and had your devices stop working? I mean, normally the cameras we have and electronics are pretty reliable in almost all circumstances, right? I mean, maybe around a lightning storm or something, they, they act a little weird. Uh, but it sort of reminds you the way you got a lot of vehicles stalling um, and acting in a peculiar manner around UFO sightings. It seems and feels like the same sort of thing. 
And so, you know, I'm wondering if it's some of the same underlying principles between crop circle shapes and the way the UFO materials work at some sort of quantum effect, quantum hall effect, topological insulators and all that stuff. I mean, we now are at the state of physics where we know that insulators can act like conductors and vice versa under certain circumstances, certain materials, certain shapes, and maybe this has something to do with it. Now, the type of battery and camera GPS malfunctioning I saw happen pretty much all at once down in the Devil's Den in 99. I've seen that repeated almost every year here in the UK. It wasn't just an isolated incident. It's something that we've seen uh, repeatedly in many different crop circles, crop formations, especially the symmetrical uh, crop formations. And that's what leads me to believe that crop circles are a type of natural technology that have electromagnetic effects that are simply very uh, out of the ordinary and don't have any conventional explanation. And uh, the more we're learning about how UFOs work, um, I mentioned the uh, talk I did about Hal Putoff hearing his lecture about UFO materials uh, several months ago, um, that these materials have extremely interesting properties that allow them to bend space-time. And I've often wondered whether the symmetry-breaking effects of the crop formations in a huge field like that can have some sort of similar effect. Keep in mind that people in crop circles have experienced a lot more than just camera and battery failure. There's often a sense of temporal distortion and other uh, experiences like that, which you could dismiss as just being subjective and all that. But if you look at it from this point of view, you could say, wow, that's kind of part of the same sort of experience that people have around you know, unexplained aerial phenomena and things like that. And so that's why, in my mind, they may be actually similar phenomena. So anyway, thought you'd enjoy seeing this. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care for now, and bye.